thanks for coming. Welcome to DeFi Demo Night, Woo! playing with Polygon. That's what we titled it. Uh, Co-hosted by Ethereum Vancouver and Blockaday. So Blockaday is the organization that I'm part of. My name is Christian, by the way. I should introduce myself. And um, I'm a co-founder of Blockaday. At Blockaday, we believe that blockchain technology has the potential to empower billions of people around the world. But we also see that there's a large knowledge gap for people being able to realize that potential. So we're all about creating innovative education for individuals and organizations to help them understand what's going on with this whole blockchain thing. Uh, I'd like to talk a bit more about Block Today, but that's after the presentation. I've delivered you some value, so you'll be more willing to listen, I'm hoping. Um, I'd like this to be kind of interactive, so if at any point you want to interrupt me to um, ask a question or uh, make a comment, maybe correct me on something, feel free. Uh, for you guys who are tuning in online, also feel free to type questions in the Zoom chat. We'll have someone facilitating uh, to answer those questions for you as well. And uh, basically, a disclaimer, like not financial advice. So whatever I say, don't. I'm not telling you to go and act on it and spend your life savings on it, right? Entertainment, entertainment, and education. Okay, so hopefully you're educated and entertained by the end of this. More entertained. <laughs> okay, uh, so since this is Ethereum Vancouver, I want to start kind of at the beginning. So, what exactly is Ethereum? We know it's a blockchain network. Ethereum is an open and permissionless financial network. So the cool thing about that is anybody in the world with an internet connection can access it and utilize it. It is censorship resistant. So there's no um, organization or nation behind Ethereum able to control transactions, able to stop people from using the network. It is secure and trustworthy. So by using this blockchain technology, um, the way that it works is it's very difficult to manipulate or alter the record of transactions on the, on the network. So by that, we can trust that it is verifiable. We know that what's said on the blockchain is legit. You know, and it's kind of the difference between trusting code and programming versus trusting these interme intermediaries like banks, right? And the cool thing about Ethereum that kind of leveled it up past Bitcoin was this final point programmable. So rather than just putting transaction data, like sending value to another person on the blockchain with Ethereum, we can put code on the blockchain um, algorithms. We can then interact with this code. And it's Ethereum is kind of this like world computer, this giant um, virtual machine it's called that can actually perform calculations for you. So we can put code onto this blockchain ledger and then we can interact with it. And by doing that, that's how we get access to all of these cool applications like DeFi, NFTs, GameFi, DAOs. It's really this programmable nature of Ethereum that allows us to have all these applications. And we're gonna get into that and actually see what that looks like, right? Uh, but there's some problems with Ethereum. So, it's everyone's favorite blockchain, but because of that, there's a lot of network congestion. There's only so much uh, transaction throughput that can be on this chain. So when we get to the point we saw like this past summer, there was so much congestion on the network that it was costing sometimes $80 to send a single transaction in Ethereum, wow. which if you're playing with a small stack, you only have like a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, you're gonna go broke pretty quick with $80 per transaction. So we're dealing with the slow transaction speed, high transaction cost, or we call that gas, um, on the network, which just led to a poor user experience if you didn't have a, a large bank. So the solution is Polygon, which we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, so Polygon's an Ethereum scaling solution. It has higher speeds in Ethereum, lower costs in Ethereum, but because it still utilizes Ethereum, it gets to keep Ethereum's security and benefit from Ethereum's network effects. So you're going to be seeing some of the DeFi applications we're using are actually the same ones you would see on Ethereum. We're just going to use Polygon because for the purposes of the demonstration I'm going to be doing, it's helpful if my transactions cost two cents instead of $80, right? So I bet we can have a lot of fun up here otherwise. So that's why I chose Polygon because it's... We're going to use similar apps that we use on Ethereum, but we can actually use it with a small stack of money. 
and I won't go broke up here showing you how it works. It's a similar app or the same app? Um, so some there's some apps that are just unique to Polygon, but because it's um, it's, it's so closely related with Ethereum, a lot of the popular applications like Uniswap, um, Curve, and Aave, those type of applications, and we'll, we'll look at those. Those are native to Ethereum. They started there, but then they kind of created a copy that is also on this Polygon chain so that people can use their favorite Ethereum apps, but without, again, having to pay so much per transaction. And again, the main thing that we got to stress here is that it it's is? not a completely separate blockchain. It's it's almost known as like a side chain or a commit chain, a few, a few names for it. Basically, it lets us, well, here, I'll show you this diagram. Um, so this is kind of a visual representation of what this looks like. So on the top there, we have the Ethereum blockchain and you can kind of think of it as a congested highway. So if during rush hour traffic, the highway is really busy, stop and go, um, and everyone's going slow, it's taking forever to get to where you're trying to get to, everyone's frustrated and swearing and flipping each other off. <laughs> so what we have is this side chain that is Polygon that runs parallel to Ethereum, and it's kind of like getting off the highway to a side road to skip traffic. You can kind of look at it that way. And to make sure that we use this Ethereum network security and network effects, we have these uh, checkpoints. So every once in a while, the Polygon chain will kind of check into Ethereum, and it will leave a record of the transaction data on Polygon on Ethereum. So when we, if someone was to come along and try to um, be malicious, try to alter the data on the blockchain on, on Polygon, they're not going to be able to do that because if they go, once they get to a certain point, the chain is going to be, have a record of it on Ethereum. So we, that's how Polygon gets this network security from the Ethereum blockchain. It is just basically communicating with Ethereum every once in a while. It's going to check in and say, hey, this is the record on Polygon and the record on Ethereum. And because Ethereum is a much bigger network with this extra security, we're able to um, trust that this chain here, the Polygon chain is reliable, just like we can trust the Ethereum chain is reliable. I just had this quote I wanted to show you. It's Polygon's kind of vision statement. So it's a world in which people and machines collaborate and exchange value globally and freely without gatekeepers or intermediaries. A world in which communities thrive unconstrained by artificial borders and archaic regulations. I just thought that was nice. It kind of sums up the whole blockchain crypto ethos. And uh, <coughs> so now let's launch into decentralized finance. So what we're here to do is demonstrate these DeFi applications for you to understand like, what they look like, how to interact with them, and kind of what the point is. Um, so we're going to start with centralized finance, kind of the opposite. So to tell you what DeFi is, we can start with what DeFi is not. So this is you, and you've got your wallet. This is just your cash wallet, and you want to do finance. And that might be sending money to someone, that might be borrowing or lending money, that might be buying and selling assets. You just want to do something with your money, finance. So what do we do? We're going to go to some sort of financial intermediary that might be a bank, that might be an exchange, that might be a broker. And we're going to either transact with that intermediary directly, or we're going to um, the bank or the exchange will connect us with another individual, kind of connect buyers and sellers together. And then we'll do business through the bank or through this exchange as the intermediary. But there's some problems with that in that the traditional financial system can be slow, it can be expensive, these intermediaries take a large cut often, and there is the issue of corruption, which we are thankful to not have to deal with too much here in Canada, but there's places in the world where you do have to be serious concerned about a bank closing your accounts on you, freezing your assets, or a lot of people in the world struggle to even get a bank account in the first place. And that's a big problem. There's a lot of people there they're considered unbanked or underbanked, and it's just they lack access to basic financial infrastructure that we take for granted here in this part of the world. And DeFi is a way for them to access financial services in that situation. So what is decentralized finance? Rather than two people or one person trying to do finance 
with this bank in the middle. We want to remove those middlemen because again, they're slow, they're expensive, and there's the problem of corruption or even just self-seeking interests, right? They don't have your best interest in mind. So instead of the middleman being this entity, this bank, we're gonna use um, blockchain protocols. It's essentially code stored in the blockchain that we can interact with to do finance, right? So the common way to do that is to do something called, go to something called a decentralized exchange. And the most common familiar one that people know of is Uniswap, that's the little unicorn logo there. So we're gonna see what Uniswap looks like. And you can go there and you can trade assets peer to peer, which is basically between two parties without having to have someone in the middle, right? And the way that these decentralized exchanges work is this concept of the automated market maker. Uh, and if you were here for the presentation, I think two weeks ago, the uh, MEV one, there was a bit of talk about automated market makers, but I'm gonna look at it a bit of a different way with again, my nice little stick man graphic. So this is you again. And this time it's your crypto wallet. That's what a little Bitcoin symbol there, right? And you want to, you want to, you want to do finance again. You want to send money. You want to trade. You want to borrow. You want to lend. But you're, you don't want to pay these exorbitant fees at the bank, or you don't want to, uh, or, or you're locked out of the banking system and you can't even get an account in the first place. So what do you do? Well, if you have an internet connection, that's all you need. And now we can interact with these decentralized exchanges. So we have this concept that's called the liquidity pool. And it's basically a big pile of, of digital tokens. So you can imagine it's all digital, so you can't actually see it, but it's a, you can think of it as this big pile of money. And typically it's two different tokens. So we're gonna call them token A and token B. So um, the important thing here is that the amounts of A and B in the pool are always equivalent. So if token A is worth $1 and token B is worth $5, then the ratio of assets in the pool will be five to one. Um, so that's kind of how it's going to work. We're going to have this equal balance of tokens in the pool. And then what is this pool? Who, who controls this pool? So this pool is held in a smart contract. That is the code that's on the blockchain. And it can be written in such a way that it can store assets. Uh, so it's kind of hard to wrap your head around. So I think an easier way is it's kind of like a robot. So instead of the bank in the middle, if you're doing, you're doing uh, transactions with this little robot guy, and he also has his own crypto wallet, okay? And within the robot's crypto wallet, he holds all of the tokens in this liquidity pool. And that's who you're actually interacting with. So if I want to say, if I have token A and I want to trade it for token B, I can go to this robot who has this liquidity pool in this wallet, and I can pay a small transaction fee and I can trade my A for B or vice versa. And the important thing there is I haven't interacted with, with anyone. I've interacted with code on the blockchain. Okay, and so how does that money get in the liquidity pool? How does the robot fill up his wallet? That's where these people come in, the liquidity providers, and that can also be you. So what you would do is you would supply an equal portion of both token A and token B, say a hundred bucks of each, and you're gonna put it into the pool. And then whenever this, this guy uh, here, whenever he wants to make a trade, he's going to pay that transaction fee and these liquidity pr providers earn that transaction fee. That's their reward for, it's called providing liquidity, but that's basically supplying assets to this pool for the users to trade, right? So that's how we can make decentralized finance work. Um, we have these the users of the protocols and we have the liquidity providers who supply tokens to the pool for the users to interact with. And it's all facilitated by this little robot guy at the bottom who really it's just a computer program that's stored on the blockchain. But I think it's easier to think of it as this little robot guy with his wallet that you're doing business with. And there's one more thing is that when the liquidity providers provide their tokens to the pool, they get these things called LP tokens or liquidity provider tokens, which is just like kind of like a share of the pool. It's a record of how much they own of that pool. And that is also kind of the receipt that gets them the transaction fees. So that's how automated market makers work. This is like the biggest DeFi innovation that really made this stuff able to be done um, on a larger scale. Uh, Uniswap wasn't the first one, but it was 
the one that kind of made it popular and mainstream. Um, and if this is confusing, that's okay. Yeah. I think Uniswap did better than the ones that came before and then made it so much more business. Um, so Uniswap basically they perfected this like um, that the algorithm of how this liquidity pool actually functions. And they made a very like clean, simple interface that was easy to interact with. I think that was a big thing. All decentralized exchanges. Um, there was one back in like I used like 2017 or 18. It's called um, Ether Delta, um, and that one just a like, terrible user interface. It was so confusing to figure out how to use it. Um, a lot of people lost a lot of money, and um, just through like improper usage. Yeah, yeah, and and this Uniswap just made it easier for the average person to use this technology and and also they again i, I don't want to talk about things i'm not a super expert on but if you're interested look into uniswap because there's a certain like calculation or algorithm that they really popularized in their amm that made this stuff blow up right Thanks. yeah no worries so if this is confusing that's okay i'm going to show you how it works and hopefully learning by doing you can get it one more concept i want to look at is yield farming so you might have heard of this. It's really simply it is lending your crypto assets and receiving like interest payments. That's the best analogy. Is that you go to the bank, you deposit your money, they give you interest, right? But in crypto, we can do so much more. But that's the concept. So we have our cryptocurrency, whatever that might be, and we have our LP tokens that we got from providing liquidity to the liquidity pool, right? So we can take those tokens and we can. It's called staking but you can think of it as lending essentially you're depositing it inside of this DeFi protocol so it's again another one of those smart contracts or the robots who have this big pool of money and you're going to put it into that pool and you're going to receive rewards every once in a while sometimes it's like daily it might be hourly sometimes it's like continuous compounding which is kind of cool mm. and you're going to receive those rewards for providing or lending staking your tokens to the DeFi protocol but what you can also do is you can have these multi-layered investments, and we're going to show you some examples of that as well. I can actually take the rewards I receive from the first DeFi protocol. I can take those to another completely different DeFi app, and I can earn additional rewards from that. And you can even do that multiple times. And that's how you get kind of these, people refer to it as money Legos sometimes. You can kind of have these different financial products that stack on top of each other. And I think it's pretty cool. And hopefully you think the same after I've shown you some examples of it. Why should you care about DeFi? <laughs> I'm up here talking about this stuff, but should you really give it down? Well, okay, so the, the biggest thing everyone uh, likes is money, right? So DeFi has higher yields than traditional finance. Of course, higher yields comes with higher risk. So beware, and again, not financial <laughs> advice, but that is what incentivizes a lot of people to participate in this thing. There's just potential to make more money with your money, right? Uh, and lower fees, no corrupt middlemen. We've cut out We've cut out the banks, we've cut out the exchanges. It's just peer to peer, person to person. And because of that, we pay a lot less in fees. And it's open to everyone. And again, like I was talking about before, like all you need is an internet connection to access this stuff. You can be in some country in the middle of nowhere, whatever, and you can be dealing with a corrupt government with a broken banking infrastructure. And if you have an internet connection, you can um, be part of the system. The next thing is cutting edge technology and new ways to earn money. Like for me personally, I just think this stuff's like really fucking cool. Like it's, it's this new cutting edge financial technology that is innovating multiple industries. And it's just a, a it's, it's fun question mark, but I think it's fun <laughs> to, to play around with. I call this event playing with Polygon because it's so gamified uh, that it just makes it it's, it's more interesting and engaging to play with your money and you're more likely to, to learn about finance, I think, if they make, they make it interesting, which these DeFi protocols think do a good job of doing. But there's risks, of course, always. Financial risk, so token depreciation. So often you're going to be investing with these crypto assets that aren't stable. They're very volatile. And I'll show you some charts. And all, I'm sure you've seen just the ones that go pretty much like this one. This only worse, right? <laughs> so you're, you're dealing with these tokens that are volatile and could depreciate quite a bit. Like many tokens have lost 99% of their value and then lost another 99% from there. So you have to be careful what you're investing in. There's smart contract risk is probably the biggest one that is um, 
is particular to DeFi. And that is, remember, we're putting our money inside of these contracts or these robots with their wallets. We're just giving them our money. And we're trusting that code, that there's no backdoor in the code or some exploit that a hacker can come in and steal our, all our money. But there might be. So you're always taking that risk it's called smart contract risk. And that's where the risk of getting your money hacked comes in. There's something called impermanent loss, which is a bit complicated, but the easiest way to think of it is remember we have this liquidity pool and we have this ratio of assets in the pool. And I have my LP tokens that are a share of my stake in the pool. But what happens if, the prices of these tokens change. So maybe token A goes up 20% and token B goes up 100%, say. Now, the ratio of assets in the pool has changed and my LP tokens that represent one share of the pool, when I put um, kind of give those back to reclaim my assets, I'm not gonna get the same amount that I put in. And if the ratio of assets has changed dramatically, I'm going to lose out and I would have been better off just holding the two assets and not staking them in the liquidity <laughs> pool. So that's what impermanent loss is. It's this, it, it's called impermanent because it, it's not, you don't actually take a loss until you sell, but it, it is kind of permanent. Um, so it's not the best name. It's just volatile. Yeah. yeah. So it, you're basically, it's dealing with the volatility uh, of the ratio of the two yeah. tokens in the pool. And as that changes, you lose value. Right. And the further these tokens gain um, drift apart from each other in, in value, the more you stand to lose. That's why a lot of these um, protocols give you rewards for staking your tokens to incentivize you to do it. Because if they didn't, no one would do it because the rewards wouldn't cover that impermanent loss. Um, so that's impermanent loss. Um, I'll try to touch upon that a bit more. It's a bit of a complicated topic to really get into. It's, but the main thing is, as the ratio of assets and the pool changes, you stand to lose money. Um, and that's why these protocols give you rewards for providing liquidity. And the final thing here is rug pulls. So this is worse than smart contract risk. It's just when the people who launch these tokens or these protocols or NFTs, they're just there to rip you off. And once you give them their money, they just take it and run. And that could happen. And it's kind of similar to smart contract risk in the way that you can kind of see in the code if like there's firms that do smart contract audits and they'll look at the software and they can actually see if perhaps the developer has put a backdoor and it lets them alter the code and steal everyone's money. And yeah, so rug pull is just, you know, getting the rug pull out from any, you know, just what you call like crypto when someone blatantly robs you. So demo time. Okay, let's do this. So these are just some of the apps we're going to be looking at. Still happen a lot. Rug pulls, oh yeah, every day. I've yeah, been a bit of that myself. Okay. Oh. So the first one we're gonna go to is Uni Store. I'll get it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so uh as I was talking about Uniswap, so this is a decentralized exchange and an automated market maker like we were just talking about and this is what it's actually going to look like in practice so maybe i'll just minimize this so you can see i have my um and metamask here this one. so this is my metamask crypto wallet basically this is how i interact with the blockchain you can see the, my tokens. I just have 60 Matic. So Matic is the native token of the Polygon blockchain. Like it, the Ether is the native token of the Ethereum blockchain. So you use to pay transaction fees. Similar on Polygon, we have Matic where you need to pay transaction fees and do some other things, but that's the main purpose of it. So I've got that in my wallet already. I'm not going to go over how to get to that step. Um, maybe in a different event we'll talk about that. But basically, I've gotten my money from. A, uh, I've turned my dollars into crypto and then I've sent my crypto to this wallet, which is just a browser extension. And it's how I'm going to interact with these applications. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is connect my wallet. So this is kind of the cool thing about using these DeFi apps. I don't have to provide any information to access this stuff. All I need to do is have a crypto wallet and connect my wallet. All I do is this MetaMask, and then this is going to pop up. And yeah, I say yeah. next and connect yeah. and boom. How you can see yeah. it shows my balance. 
So I'm connected up here, you can see my wallet address. And that's all I have to do. Now I can, I can swap tokens, right? So I can go to USDT, that is a stable coin. So this is always worth $1. And I can swap them. So I can say I want to swap like 20 of my Matic tokens. And it's, it remembers, so there's equal amounts of, of asset A and asset B in the pool. So in this case, Matic is asset A and USDT is asset B. So when I input a number here, the USDT automatically uh, updates because so that's 200 Matic is worth 301 USDT, right? And so there's all, that's how much I'm going to get if I swap out these assets. So I'm just going to do 20, so I'm going to get 30 USDT, I click swap. First I have to confirm. And every time I do anything on the blockchain, it's going to prompt my wallet to confirm it. And then you can see this is the gas fee, so that's the transaction fee. Notice it's 0 0.006 Matic, so one Matic is like a buck fifty or something right now. So this is just um, pennies. Whereas if this was Ethereum, this would be legit like 20 bucks right now to do this one transaction. And I, like, I only have, what, 80 bucks here. So four transactions would be done, you have to all go home. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna confirm it. And that's it. And now if we go to my wallet, okay, so it's, it's pending. So um, this stuff is not instantaneous. Often it takes a little bit of time Polygon is typically faster than Ethereum, but depending on how many people are using the chain at a certain time, there could be some delay, but we're already good to go. I have just swapped my Matic for USDT. So this is the decentralized exchange that I've just interacted with a liquidity pool that we were talking about in the slides. The pool has Matic and USDT. I've gone to that pool and I've traded my tokens out. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we can also, provide liquidity. So we go to pools and we can explore the top pools. So this is going to show all the liquidity pools that exist on uh, Uniswap on Polygon. So this is, we can switch the network. We can look at Ethereum and some of these other ones, but we're on Polygon, it's important. Um, and we can see all of these pools. So USDC, Ethereum, uh, Matic USDC, Matic Ethereum, etc. There's all these different ones, five pages. TVL is total value locked. So that's just the size of the pool. That's how much money the robot has in this little crypto wallet, how much money the liquidity providers have given to the pool. And then we have the volume in a day at a seven day period. And then here, this small amount, this percentage, that's like the fee. So if I was to provide liquidity to this pool, I would get that much like kind of per year. So it's not that good. We want a lot better. So we're not going to do that. Um, what we are going to do is go to this other one, this other exchange. This is Uniswap. Again, Uniswap was not, it was originally on Ethereum and then Uniswap created kind of a clone to put on Polygon. So this, again, we can see we're on Polygon. I can just switch, switch to Ethereum, same thing. Uh, but I want to go to this one, it's called QuickSwap. Very similar, you'll see a similar setup. Um, but we can get better yields on this, which again means more risk. But if we look at some of these pools, we can see like 60% APY, 86%. And that's the amount you get per year by staking in these pools. So some of them are pretty decent, better than we were seeing on Uniswap. So I think what we're going to do is this uh, Matic USDT pool, because we have both of those tokens. As you remember, Actually, yeah, sure. So, is it uh, like if you provide liquidity pool to a pool that has like a stable coin against uh, another crypto, isn't the chances of impermanent loss always much much higher? Yeah, it's always going to go up, right? Definitely. I mean, the market in the past like month has been pretty flat, right? So maybe now would be a good time to stake in one of these pools. If it, it's basically what you think is going to happen, if I think the market is going to stay flat, if I think these two tokens are going to be the similar value, then it makes sense to provide liquidity. If I think the tokens are going to drift apart significantly, then no. I probably wouldn't be in that pool. But remember, the impermanent loss is offset by this yield. So I don't have the calculator here, but you can do the math and you can see, you kind of put in a few scenarios and predict what is, what's going to happen in the future. And you can see if this, say, 33% is 
greater than what you're going to suffer from the impermanent loss. Uh, okay, so I want to stake my, I'm going to do some yield farming. I want to get some high returns. That's why we're in DeFi. I want to make some money. So I'm going to deposit in this Matic USDT pool. I have both of those assets. So I need to connect to a wallet. Again, every time it's going to prompt me to yeah. connect. And remember, if you do this, if you connect and the, the website is malicious, your money is gone. So when you say connect, make sure you know what you're connecting to. Okay. So we're going to, this is quick swap. Again, it's very similar to Uniswap with the automated market maker system. A few other things we can do that I'm going to show you. So um, again, we, we could just do a normal swap. We did that on Uniswap already. We have these tools. And uh, so this would be my pools. I don't have any. I can create a pair. I can actually create a liquidity pool of any two assets I want to. Uh, but the thing is, uh, I don't have a lot of money, so I wouldn't be able to have a lot of liquidity in the pool. And if there's not a lot of assets in the pool, people get really bad prices when they trade your pool. So that's kind of the concept of liquidity is like how how liquid the market is. Is like if if I was to do a transaction, how good of a price will I get? Relative, like if if if, if I'm swapping um, again, say I have token A was one dollar, token B was five dollars. If I swap five A's, I should get exactly one B. But if there's not a lot of liquidity in the pool, I'll get a worse price. I'll end up with like 0.8 B or something like that. Um, I can actually show you what that would look like quickly. So if I go to the swap um, and I'm going to go Matic and like some random token, like what are we thinking? Baby quick? Sure. So, okay, so, um, so you can see uh, if I was to do a hundred Matic token, um, the price impact is 0.78%. So basically I'm losing like 0.78% um, from what I should be getting in an actual um, liquid market. And, and the higher I put this, this number, the worse it gets. So now if I was to do this 1,000 Matic trade for baby quick, and I get 1.4 billion tokens, pretty cool. But I would lose out 7.28%. Yeah. And then if it's even more, see, Basically, you're just going to lose all your money if you try to do something like this because there's just there's not enough liquidity in the pool to facilitate this type of transaction. So another thing is you want to make sure the pools you're working with are liquid. Back to our little task here, we're going to try to build a cool little yield farm. So we have Matic, we have USDT. We're going to deposit into here. Add Matic USDT liquidity. Okay, so now I am I'm on. No longer am I the guy swapping tokens. Now I'm the guy who's providing the liquidity to these pools. So I am going to do, let's say, like 10, 10 Matic. And that's going to be this much USDT. Again, these amounts are equal because there's an equal a value amount of each token in the pool. Uh, a lot of the time I have to approve the contract first. So before I actually do the swap or the liquidity provision, I have to give my, my wallet has to give permission to actually interact with this protocol. So that's what it's doing now, it's just pending. Yeah. How do some of those coins offer like 100% return? Yeah, so a lot of the time they'll, they'll be like, uh, rewards provided by these protocols to incentivize you to use them um, and a lot of the time it's unsustainable so how can they offer you a hundred percent apr well when we look up baby quick crypto to do this um baby quick coinbase okay let's see if that works i just want to see what the chart looks like okay <laughs> Yeah, so you can see, I mean, in the past year, this thing is down 83%. So say they were giving you 100% APY, but the token is down 83%. Really, they were giving you like 17% APY, whatever the math is. So they're offering you what seems to be a really high return, but it's it's in these highly inflationary tokens because you can't create money out of nowhere. So they're basically just printing these tokens and giving them to you as a reward for providing liquidity. But then people just sell the token and it plummets in price. I mean, it, it depends when you buy it. But like, for example, Baby Quick, not a good investment. So I wouldn't recommend that one. Again, this is not financial advice. So if you, if you want. 
Did I answer your question? No, I guess I have a follow-up question about that. What is like maybe this is a dumb question, but no dumb questions. Um what would be a reasonable rate of return like for us not not stable but for like a reasonable thing that's not gonna perform it like crazy? Yeah. Like, um, what would you expect? Are you like, like all, like yeah. I mean, it, 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 there's so many variables in, that go into that. It's like, is the token that you're receiving? Do you do, do you think that token is going to appreciate long term, or or not? Right. Mm -hmm. And if if so, you know, there, it, there's a lot of things you're you're balancing. Uh, to, I can't really give you a number. We're going to do a few here that are like between twenty and forty percent. I think that's like kind of reasonable. Um, mm -hmm. I've I've done I've seen some things that are crazy you know like you know sixty thousand percent or whatever obviously that's not sustainable those things just crash and burn so there's no magic number uh, maybe there's a magic number I don't know what it is but we'll we'll just you, know, you can see the numbers I'm working with and if that, that excites you we'll we'll go with that so I'm adding liquidity to the liquidity pool for Matic and USDT I can see that I'm going to get less than 0.01 percent of the pool. Which is fine. I'm not playing with a lot of money, but that's why we're using polygons. So I don't have to. So I'm going to confirm on MetaMask. And we're just going to wait for that to go. And we're going to start putting together these money Legos. So we can do this all in quick swap, which is why I kind of like it. Um, QuickSwap is made specifically for Polygon. It was actually supposed to be the replacement for Uniswap before Uniswap um, moved on to Polygon. Okay, so what we have now is our, you can see I have 0 0.00000662 Matic USDT. This, these are my LP tokens. So now we're going to go to this dual mining here. And what we have here is it's called liquidity mining. And this is kind of to your point, you were just talking about like, what is, what is a good rate of return? How do you offer these high risk returns? So what we have here, it's, it's liquidity mining program. So they're trying to incentivize people to provide liquidity to this exchange um, because if they didn't, no one, maybe no one would use it. So we're getting dual rewards which is right here, we're getting paid out in, in Matic token, and we're also getting paid out in Quick token, which is the native token of this Quick exchange. And they're offering us this bonus, um, you see it's rewards plus fee APY. So they're giving us a large reward on top of the transaction fee to incentivize us to, um, to put our money in. So let's do that. We're going to deposit Look, we get 21% for Matic USDT. Again, maybe not the best token to buy liquidity for if we think Matic is going to either go up a lot or down a lot in price. But if we think maybe Matic is going to kind of stay stable, we get 21% in return for, for providing liquidity here. So we have the LP tokens. We're just going to deposit them now. And we're going to start putting this D quick and this W Matic. So I'm going to put all my LP tokens. Again, I have to approve to let my wallet have to give permission to interact with this contract. And I deposit. There is a bit of friction, I find, especially when I'm standing up here, like waiting for these transactions to confirm and stuff. Um, it's kind of the nature of, of how it is in the future, maybe just a bit quicker, but considering we're doing all of this, just interacting with the blockchain, there's no bank or exchange entity that I'm interacting with. I guess that's the price you pay. A little circle to spin around. Okay. So now we can see uh, now I've deposited my liquidity and I'm going to start earning rewards pretty quick here. Actually, I think if I click claim rewards, yeah. So I'm already starting to accumulate rewards. So it's literally paid out like by the, yeah, see, so it just increased just like that. So it's continuous compounding inside of this pool. Okay. So I have my matic and usdt lp and i'm earning 20 percent by staking those tokens but that's not good enough i want more 
So I get these rewards, I get Matic, and I get this dquick token. So what can we do with dquick? Well, I can actually go to these, it's called Dragon's Syrup. I don't know why it's called Dragon's Syrup, but just trust me, it is. And I can now deposit my quick tokens into these pools. And I don't know what, I don't know what any of these tokens are. Fuse, Dirt, Cairo, Tel. I can tell you what any of those do, but notice how much they're paying out. 40, yeah, 40.344. Okay, so I'm earning 40% if I deposit my quick, but it's paid out in Fuse. Uh, and then again, remember, if we, if we look at Fuse crypto, I, this is just for, for reference. You can see they're offering 40%, but like, what is 40% when the chart looks like that, right? So, I mean, okay, so if you were back here and you were earning 40% on a token or 40% paid out in a token, and then that token appreciates from 10 cents to $2, that's a pretty good deal. But if you, if at $2, you start to farm this token and it's crashed now down to 30 cents. <laughs> So you're not really earning 40%, right? You're earning like 5%. Right? I, don't know, I don't know the math, but it's not like, you just have to kind of think about all these variables. It's not always as as great as, oh, I'm earning 40%. That's crazy. It's you're earning 40% in a rapidly depreciating token. So what you can do, because the transaction fees are so small in Polygon, you can just, um, you can sell them instantly to whatever currency you want. And it's pretty quick. Um, but we're going to, we're just going to see what that looks like. So remember I had this Matic USDT farm that I had going uh, and I'm earning rewards already. So I would let these rewards accumulate a little bit because they're almost nothing, right? But I can claim them anytime. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to show you what I can do with this quick token. So pretend I left this for like a week or something and I'd actually claim like a significant amount of rewards. So then I would claim those, uh, and I think I have them now. And I would go to the Dragon's Syrup. So the name is just kind of fun. Okay, so now I have, okay, so it, it, there's a, another step here, I believe I have to do. Yes. Okay. So what happens when I claim that I, it's, it's not quick, it's D quick, which stands for like dragon quick. Um, and that automatically, I think goes into this pool here. Yeah. So I can see, I have some quick already accumulating here because what happened was I claim my D quick and it automatically went into this pool that is earning me quick. And then I will withdraw this. And again, there's not much accumulated there, but if I was to leave it for you know a, a while, again, this stuff accumulates. I think I have that now. Sometimes the, the UI takes a while to update, so it's hard to know exactly what went through. So assuming that works, okay, so once this transaction is done, the next thing I can do, remember stacking these money Legos together. So I started with these two tokens. I put them into a liquidity pool. I got an LP token. And now I stake that LP token to earn additional rewards. I get these quick. And now I'm going to withdraw my quick token. And I'm going to do one more layer in this yield form. I'm going to go, um, anybody have a preference? Fuse, Dirk, Cairo, Tell, Volt, Call, Volt. Volt. So both are me 46.8% and I can deposit my quick. Again, I don't have much. I have like a fraction of almost worth nothing, but this is kind of the, the layers we can do in this farm, right? So I was earning 20% by staking my LP and then I can take those rewards I'm earning and I can stake them in this farm also to earn another 40% on top of that. So now we're getting somewhere. Again, we're getting paid out in these tokens that might depreciate over time so the numbers take them with a grain of salt but we um we can also just sell those tokens whenever we want and okay we approved and now we can deposit and again this isn't really doing anything 
for me because the amount is so low, but just, you know, pretend that I have a bunch of money that I'm playing around with here. Okay, and it's that easy. So now what I have, I have kind of this multi-layered investment that's paying me out. It's not exactly 60%, but we can say like, it, it's something you're never gonna see in normal finance, something like this. And it's done. Okay, now I can see my deposits are zero, but there is something there. It's just a fraction of nothing. So that's that's quick swap uh, and Uniswap. So what we did again to recap, we took our tokens, we we swapped one token for another, we put those tokens together, we provided liquidity so other people could then come to that pool and swap like we did. And then this exchange is wants us to provide liquidity, so they're incentivizing us to stake those LP tokens. And they give us that reward, that 20% paid out in this quick token. I take that quick token that I earn and I stake it in this other farm to earn Volt. Volt in syrup. Whatever the heck that means. Okay. So that is the AMM. That is the liquidity pools. There's a couple more things I want to look at. Um, so one is Aave. Aave is like a decentralized lending and borrowing protocol. Earn interest, borrow assets launch the app this is kind of interesting so look at this by accessing this link you are leaving ave.com and are being re re redirected to a third-party independent website this redirect takes you to a community deployed and maintained instance of the open source Aave front end hosted served on a distributed peer-to-peer -peer file network ipfs so basically it's kind of like a disclaimer or uh, they're trying to remove any liability they're saying this is Aave's website, but as soon as we go to their application, they're like, we do not host this application. This is, this is an open source, meaning that um, you know, anybody can access it, anybody can work on the code, right? So they're just trying to remove that liability. They're saying you know, their company is, is not really affiliated or in charge of what's going on on this application. Just thought that was an interesting thing that they showed to people. So, what do we have here? You can see the assets that I hold. I have USDT, I have Matic. Um, we can go to markets. And so here's all of the assets that we can lend and borrow. So these are all the assets. Uh, there's not too many. Again, we're on Polygon, which when we're using Aave, like, so Aave is also a like Uniswap and started on Ethereum, but it created kind of a clone for the Polygon network. There's just less options and less people use it. Ethereum is so popular uh, that, that you know, Polygon can't really compete in the amount. Like, for example, you can see that the total supply, even in this biggest pool, wrapped Ethereum, it's only 2.9 million. Um, and if we were to swap to the Ethereum market, just for reference, you can see like 4.2 billion. So literally like a thousand X more money is on this protocol in Ethereum than on Polygon. But again, we're using Polygon because we're poor. We can't afford to use it. Yeah, for sure it's on here. So this is 500K uh, for the biggest pool. And then most things are almost nothing. And so there's barely any assets. It's literally $192 oh. in change. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, All right. <laughs> Why does it even exist? Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't speak for those type of things, but it's interesting, right? You can see the total market size only a million dollars. And Ethereum is just so much more. So that goes back to the concept of liquidity. Um, again, if, if there's less liquidity in a pool, you're just going to get worse deals typically. But anyways, we're, so we're playing with Polygon. We're going to stick with that. So a couple of things we have here, again, total supply is the total size of the pool. It's kind of like the liquidity pools, but this is just one single asset. We have supply APY. So this is the amount per year that I'm going to get paid for lending. So if I lend USDC, I get paid 1.34% per year. If I borrow USDC, I pay 2.55%. Um, and I can actually choose between these two. There's like a variable and a stable rate. So, um, I can take the lower variable rate, but that could change. And, and the steel one is guaranteed for the full term, right? Yeah. So just to clarify something, if someone here is supplying uh, USDC, you're going to pay a certain percentage, right? Can you clarify what that percentage is on? Like, is it on USDC? Yeah. 
worth their own money. Yeah. So, um, so these these percentages you get paid out in the actual token. So whatever token I'm lending, I get paid out um, in that one. So I want to show you kind of how this works. I want to take advantage of something here, Hill. So look at this. I can supply USDT for 2.75%. That means I get paid 2.75% per year paid out in Tether, which is a stable coin. And I can borrow USDC, which is also a stable coin, for 2.55%, it's actually less than this. So what I can do then, um, I can supply my Tether. So I have 15 or so Tether. Um, so okay, I have to approve and then I'm going to supply it. And what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to, uh, let, me, let me take one step back first. So in traditional finance, you can, you can go to a bank and you can borrow money um, if you don't really have anything to offer them because of the concept of a credit score, right? So I have some kind of, I mean, I don't know exactly how credit scores work. I think it's kind of not very transparent the way they have that set up. Uh, but if you have a good enough credit score, you can get a loan from the bank without needing to put up anything else. Or in the case of a mortgage, you're putting up your, your house, right, to get that loan. So in crypto, there's no, it, there's, there's pros and cons. There's no credit score. So no one can tell you that you can't borrow money just because you have crappy credit. But because there's no credit score, there's no, there's no way to like validate or like, or, or prove that you're going to be credit worthy because we're all just anonymous strings of numbers on here. Um, so in crypto land, what you would do is you provide collateral. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm going to provide 15 tether. I'm going to supply it. I'm going to lend it to the protocol, and then I can borrow against that. If I don't, if I don't supply any money, I can't borrow because there's no way for the protocol to hold me accountable that I'll actually return the money. So what I do, I'll show you what I'm going to do. But right now I am supplying the tether, and now once that goes through, I think I go to the dashboard. You just gotta be patient. But we're going to see here, it's gonna say that I have the tether supplied. Yeah, okay, cool. So here we have $15 in tether. I'm earning 2.75% APY. Um, and now I can borrow USDC. And I'm gonna pay less on the USDC than I'm getting paid to borrow in tether. So it's kind of like, free money, not really, be careful <laughs> with that, but you know, we can make use of this. So <clears throat> something important here, this is the concept, the health factor. I don't know the exact math behind that, but I can only borrow a certain percent of my collateral. So yeah, okay, so this is saying the max, I put in $15, the max I can borrow is here, 11.26. So I think it's like 75% or something like that. But the problem is of this, there's a risk of liquidation. So if I'm borrowing an asset and the, uh, the price of that asset changes so much that my collateral no longer covers it, they're going to liquidate me or force me to sell that position and I have to pay a penalty. So if I do like a really high amount, it says liquidation risk is high, lower amounts recommended. So I have this health factor, 1.09, it's red. If this number goes, to, goes below 1.0, I get liquidated, they, they're gonna sell my, they're gonna close this position, they're gonna take 11 USDT from me and then some more as a like um, a, a penalty, exactly. So I'm gonna pick the variable. Again, this could change, a little note here. So yeah, stable will stay the same, variable could vary, so you have to be careful with that. We don't want this liquidation to be below one because we will, will be forced to close out our position and we'll lose a bunch of money. So we want to keep this like kind of relatively low. So I can do like six USDC. I'm going to borrow that. Okay. And then we're going to wait for that to show up. Okay, so now we're borrowing USDT and we're getting paid 2.75%. Or sorry, we're lending USDT and getting paid 2.75%. Now we're borrowing USDC and only paying 2.55%. So this is 
So I'm, I'm actually getting paid in a way to borrow this USB-C and I can do whatever I want with that. It's actually in my wallet. So if I was to go back to Uniswap in the swap, I, and I go to my um, USDC, but I have that six, I can use it now. So I can swap for some other token and I can trade around with this money, which is money I've borrowed. I'm, I'm getting paid for the fact that I'm borrowing this money. Um, but what I can also do on Aave, I can now take my six USDC and I can supply that now. And I can, again, I don't want to do, Oh, yeah, I can put the whole amount in, I think. It's not going to change my liquidation. So I can actually put up this six USDC and I can borrow against that now also. And you have to be careful when you're doing this kind of stuff because as we have more layers to this investment, we're just going to be at risk of liquidation and it's hard to unwind this. So remember everything I'm doing, all these steps I'm taking to make these investments, you have to do the reverse to, to get out of that investment and it can be a little time consuming. The, the thing I want you to like um, keep in mind here is the fact that I'm able to do this. All I am to this website, I'm just a string of numbers. That's my crypto wallet address, right? So I could be in another country in the world right now, as long as I have an internet connection, I can be interacting with these applications and they know nothing about me. They have no, I don't have to supply my personal information and my name and my email and my phone number and my driver's license and, et cetera, et cetera. They don't need that about me to do business with them because there is no that. It's just, I'm doing business peer to peer with other people around the world facilitated by this code. And that's kind of the empowering thing. I think it's kind of hard for people in this part of the world sometimes to wrap their head around because we don't have that perspective of living in a place where you can't get a bank account or you're worried about your, if your money's going to be there tomorrow or you're worried about uh, crazy hyperinflation in places like Venezuela, where your money is worth like 1% of what it was last week, right? And that's, that's real. That's not even a made up number. Okay, so look at this now. I've taken my six USBC that I've borrowed and I'm, I'm re-lending it to make even more money. Remember, I was, I was getting this for free. Like I was getting paid to borrow this money and I've taken the money that I got paid to borrow and I'm re-lending it for more. And what this has done is that it's increased my amount of collateral. Now I can borrow more assets. Um, so I can borrow. Like, so you're planning some kind of arbitrage. Is that, is that fair? You, yeah, you can look at it that way. You can, you can kind of, I can, yeah, I, I can see that the rates between these stable coins are, are maybe not. not yeah, that, that, that 0.2% that difference. Yeah, so I can, I'm taking advantage of that. If I was to do this in the reverse order, it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, yeah. Can you just like um, really simplify and run down the process of how you would borrow and then re-lend and just, yeah. just that, that sort of process, yeah. Yeah, um, so I mean, I've done it here. Like I basically, I have my collateral on the left side here. So that's how much money total I've, it's just $20 that I've lent to the platform. And I can borrow, I can borrow against that. I can borrow up to like 75% say, so I can borrow $15 against that. And I can take that money that I can borrow and I can go take it again. I can take it to Uniswap and swap it around, or I can put it back into the platform so I did it one step already. So I took my USDT and I lent it. And because I lent USDT, I can borrow a certain amount of other assets. I chose USDC. And so now I have this, this is that I borrowed six USDC. And again, I can, I can take that, I can do whatever I want with that, but I want to reinvest it in this platform. So that's what I did here. I took five of that $6 and I am now earning 1.34%. So remember, I was getting paid to borrow it, and now I'm also getting paid an additional 1.34% to lend it. Right. Okay. And now I can continue to do that because I've lent this USDC. My collateral is actually higher now, so I can I can borrow another asset like Dai. And but I have to be careful, okay? Because again, this number increases my liquidation risk. So I I'm gonna not do too much here. I'm gonna borrow like two Dai. Sorry, what's the difference between the variable and stable? Okay, so stable, that's guaranteed. That number will not change. That is my interest rate. Variable is lower, but it can change. 
it's kind of like if you get like a variable versus a fixed rate, like on a mortgage, for example, um, it, typically this, the fixed rate is higher, but you know it's never going to go past that point. For all I know, this variable rate tomorrow could be 10%, but yeah. my strategy is not working anymore, right? How they, how they <clears throat> so I think, excuse me, um, that's a good question, actually. Uh, it's, there's a few variables. It's to do with um, what the asset is, who, how many people are, are using the pool. Um, so typically, if if the pool is smaller, you might see like a, a higher APY. Um, the that's a really good question. I don't know exactly how they decide. Like for example, why I can I get paid more to borrow to to lend tether than to USDC, for example. Okay, so my guess is it's based on the people on the other side of the trade. Yeah. So the only reason I can get two point seven five percent versus one point three four percent is more people right now want to borrow tether then want to borrow USDC. So yeah. it's, you kind of think of the person on the other side of the trade. I can only get paid this much because there's more demand. And you can see that reflected here. So the, the APY on Tether to borrow is much higher than the USDC because there's higher demand for that. People are willing to pay more interest for Tether because they want more Tether because it's the biggest stable coin that it has the most applications. Um, it, I want to say the most trusted, but that's a highly debated topic. <laughs> Tether. Um, anyways, I hope that answers your question. I, I don't know like all how all that goes into it, but it is like supply and demand is a big part of it. Do they do the variable change rates change pretty quickly? Do you remember stable coins? Yeah, yeah, I've seen like like sh like like multiple percent shifts yeah, with, within days especially when the market's moving a lot. Like just uh, for example, um, I remember in, I want to say May last year um, on Binance, they were giving 6% for Tether. And within like two months, that number had dropped to like 1%. So that's a pretty significant change. And that was mainly because less people wanted to borrow Tether. Um, in, in comparison, now that amount is 10% um, to, to, so you can stake your USDT on Binance for 10%. So my guess is that this means there's a lot more demand for people wanting to borrow that asset. So typically that's how it's going to work. It's going to be supply and demand um, and it's going to depend on the asset. Um, I'm probably missing a few things. It'd be an interesting thing to look into how, how we, how these rates are set and what causes them to change so much. So I'm going to just make this a little more risky. Hmm. Remember, every time this number goes down, I'm at higher risk of liquidation. I'm paying, I'm playing with very little money, so I'm not too worried about it. But just be careful, get not financial advice. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so now I've borrowed two die, and then I can just also once it's back in my wallet here. Yeah, I have it, and I can supply it. And have to approve it. My MetaMask. Anyways, you you'll see that eventually it'll be. I won't even go through with it to be honest, but but that's the idea. I can stack these investments on top of each other. I can borrow money for free or even get paid to borrow, and then I can take that borrowed asset and lend it for more interest. So it's just another way you can stack those money Legos. What I'm showing you is maybe not like the most efficient, best use of your money. Again, that's why it's not financial advice. I just want to show you how this stuff works. And even I don't know the best strategies for this with this stuff. Yeah. So you've got quite a bit of experience doing this. Like how have you found yourself to be for yourself? Um, so I have, I actually don't have much experience with Polygon itself. I just did it because, um, like to learn about it myself and it just, it's cheap for me to in interact with all this stuff. Um, uh, a chain that I found to be pretty good was Avalanche. Um, I use that quite a bit and, um, it, the, the big problem is, um, people are so quick to jump ship when things are going wrong, mm -hmm. uh, especially in DeFi, a lot of the time it needs to be like a really hands-on investment. 
Yeah. So it's not something that I would be comfortable leaving for like three years and coming back. I don't even know if the app's still there in three years, I don't know if the token still exists in three years, right? Three weeks. Three weeks, even three weeks. I don't know. <laughs> so three weeks is fine. I've lost things for three weeks. But you have to really be paying attention to what's happening because people, like people who are like professional yield farmers, they're going to um, leave their money in a pool for two weeks while the APY is really high. And then once the token starts to crash or once um, the, the return starts to drop, they're going to take their money and go to the next best thing, right? Um, so that can be profitable, but you have to be always like on the cutting edge. What's the next thing? Making sure you're not getting scammed or hacked. Um, so I mean, the, the people who do this stuff and make a lot of money off it, they do a lot of research, and I mean, they probably lose a lot of money at the same time. You, know, you um, but I, I have had some success with this kind of stuff. But again, a lot of that stuff has been things that I don't know if I'd be confident leaving my money in for for a year. You know, uh, yeah. <coughs> Yeah, easily. So like, uh, I've got it here. Like, I, I, I'm, um, I'm. I don't think I can withdraw my money because my collateral is necessary. But it's easy enough. Like, basically, I haven't sold it because it's here. It's inside of that pool. So again, there's that smart contract or that robot with a wallet. And I said, here's my money. And he's paying the interest for giving him that money. And then other people can come to him and borrow that money from him. But it's easy enough. I just say withdraw. Um, and I can't, and I can take out like one USDC, right? And I withdraw it. And then I just need to prove that. Confirm. And and then, then it's that easy. So now I have taken that asset back. Okay. So we'll see if it has changed. Yeah. So now it's four dollars. And if I go back to Uniswap, you can see I have. Oh, I should have two. Yeah, I have two now. Okay. It's not in the money back. Was that easy? I, at any time, twenty four seven, three sixty five. I can come in here. I can lend. I can borrow, uh, and no one can stop me, except. No, not on this. No, there's some some platforms are going to incentivize you to put yourself in longer. It'll be like a, a, a withdrawal fee that will decrease over time. So it's kind of stop people. Like I was just talking about the people who like jump between protocols and they'll they'll put their money in for two weeks and get out. They try to de, uh, de, de what's the word decentivize disincentivize that uh, by putting those withdrawal holdings but on this no there's no fee um and then the transaction fees are so small i can unwind all of the transactions that i've done today and i'd probably be down like one dollar right which is pretty interesting and i've done well i've done dozens of transactions and i've paid almost nothing and i'm not getting paid to i'm not going to have to pay to, to undo all this stuff so that's abe um because one more thing i just want to show you quickly we're at 7 34 so i don't want to be up here talking too much longer um I just want to show you one last app, kind of popular on Ethereum. It's called Curve. And Curve is, no, I don't want to go to. So I want to make sure again, Curve is on multiple, uh, multiple networks. So I want to make sure that I click um, Polygon. Not even let me click it. So let's try this. Uh, so basically what Curve is, it's another one of those automated market makers, but it's it's really specifically made for stable coins. So stable coins, those are the tokens that are pegged to typically the US dollar, but it's a um, any sort of asset that's not going to be um, volatile. And Stable coins are on the on one end of many transactions. So a large majority of transactions in crypto are between one coin and a stable coin because people like to have something to track their balance against in terms of US dollar typically. So what's important then is we need a lot of liquidity in these stable coin pools. So when people are doing these trades, they're they're actually these stable coins are actually worth one dollar. So that's where curve comes in. Um, and it's a little, these are interesting tools because you see they actually hold more than two tokens often. Like even this one has four tokens in the pool. Um, 
but the main thing is this feature here, which is swapping between stable coins. What Curve says they can do is give you the lowest, it's called slippage. And that's what I was looking at back in like Uniswap. Remember if I was to go for like some random, what was it like baby, baby or something? Whatever. All right, we'll, 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 we have baby yield of finance. <laughs> so I don't even know if that's gonna work. Baby Yoda is not a good example, but we'll just go some random DNT. Um, and again, the, yeah, see, remember this price impact? So if there's not a lot of liquidity in the pool, I lose a lot of money when I trade against the pool, which is not good when you're dealing with these stable coins because they're, so what Curve says is they can have stable coin swaps with the lowest amount of slippage. And that's the main purpose, but we can also stake our assets in these pools. Um, and I'm trying to use the polygon one, but it's, And so it's going to get me to automatically switch my network. And I'm not going to do too much um, on this. I just want to show you. Again, it's Polygon has way less offerings than Ethereum. But basically, I can stake. Let's do. So this one's offering me 12% um, paid out in curve token. 12% sounds pretty good. Um, curve token, like that might be a good investment if I can earn 12% by putting in a stable coin. And it's kind of cool for this. I can invest any asset I hold. I think I have some USDC. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to supply like, yeah, I'm going to supply, supply one USDC. Um, wait, I want to go to deposit. And what it's trying to do is trying to get me to put in like all these tokens, right? But I don't have to, I can just, for this, I can think I can just put in like just the, the USDC. And what it's going to do is then it's going to split my USDC into an equal amount of all five of these tokens. And I have the same problem here where I'm going to be exposed to that impermanent loss because there's some Bitcoin in here, there's some Ethereum in here. Um, but it's the same idea. I supply my assets and I get paid rewards for them. And that's basically a curve is there's a lot more to curve, especially on, um, on Ethereum. Let's we'll quickly go back to the Ethereum network. So we can, you can like create your own pools. Um, we can go to use curve. You can lock up your curve tokens for like voting rights. A lot of times these tokens give you the ability to vote on these, how these decentralized protocols um, operate. There'll be like proposals that come up. And if you're a big token holder, it's like holding stock in a company. So I can lock up my CRV tokens. I can get these B CRV tokens that give me, I get additional rewards, I get voting power. Um, I just, I can't do that on the polygon chain. And there's like a curved DAO, I guess. There's, there's a lot of stuff this thing's doing. I just want to show you Ethereum app that's on polygon for stablecoin swaps and liquidity pools. So, I mean, that's basically all, everything I want to show you guys. Um, does anybody have any questions or any, anything else you want me to like talk about or demonstrate? You killed that, man. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs>